morning, my fellow vloggers and designers. So today we are doing a three-pronged attack. First of all, it's off to the Regent's Park job where we're going to see Ernest. There's a few little touch-ups of things that need to uh, happen there. This is just some picture hanging, uh, just some checking over, um, a little bit of uh, repairs because the cleaners um, made some marks on the walls when they were there. This is something that you have to look out for. Uh, you can sort of say it's due diligence um, or just general checking after workmen and supplies have been in. Uh, this is something I will be dealing with, um, I'm already dealing with, with the cleaners. So Ernest is going in to just repair that. Um, and then I'm going to be taking the housekeeper's headboard over to the Primrose Hill job, uh, which has been a long time coming. Uh, but it's just a question of getting things in people's diaries now that uh, this is we're into the Christmas rush, that's what's happening. So uh, that's what we have planned for the morning. And then in the afternoon, I'm going over to the Chelsea house. Um, again, to see the joiner, the client would like an extra shelf. So that's uh, need to be measured for. And the sensor, the lighting we have um, on a sensor as you open the wardrobe doors. And the clients would like some adjustments made, which is perfectly normal. Um, so the joiner is going to do that as well. I'm also going to sweep around the house and make sure I've got everything on my snagging list. Uh, ready for the builders. I spoke to the builders yesterday. Uh, they're ready to hit the property when we say so. Um, so we're all good there. I think the client wants to wait until he has all the furniture in before finishing the painting, uh, the touch-ups of paint, which is a very wise thing to do. Anyway, it's uh, very dull here. I think it's going to start raining again here in London town. Let's get on with the day. So just as a recap here, um, this is the Regent's Park job, so you can see the painting is in progress um, and we're sort of going to be painting sort of all around. We're not doing the woodwork on this, it's just the paint. So this is Egyptian cotton by Dulux and that's the protection on the floor there. Uh, just nice and light for that. And if you move into sort of the shower room, so Ernest has done a good job by putting up the new lights up here. Uh, everything's been cleaned and we're sort of in progress here. Um, this is the main living room. So we're not doing the entire stuff here. So basically if you sort of, if I sort of pan around here, um, you can see there's a difference you might be able to see from the other um, footage I've taken previously. So this is a much darker, deeper color. Uh, the kitchen here is looking very good indeed. Um, and this is the hallway, which is also looking a little bit um, better from what it was before, from what the, how the tenant left it. And we'll just have a quick look at Terry doing the finishing touches. So, welcome to the Regent's Park job part three, I think this is. Um, today we are just doing a few little touch-ups here at the flat. Uh, what I spoke to you about earlier, there's a few bits and bobs to do with um, cleaning and a little bit of damage that the cleaners have done. Let me show you that first of all actually, uh, whilst Ernest is working um, at the back behind. We'll step over his workman stuff. Um, so here, let's see if I can show you. So Ernest has actually filled this bit in um, already, so you can see this bit here. What the cleaners actually did was they decided they would ram this sofa back into this wall um, because they just felt the need to do that. And obviously this made a dent um, in the wall. They also, which you can possibly see, um, you can see these watermarks here. So this is uh, due to when they were actually cleaning um, this sofa. So when they actually um, extract the dirt, they use a machine. Um, and that's fine, but uh, they should have pulled this away from the wall. You just have to watch that uh, with some supplies, especially cleaners. This happens when you do builder's cleans. And builder's cleans, if you don't already know, when you've had work done, the builders usually arrange it, uh, but you actually get cleaners in and they just give the place a thorough cleaning. It means they clear up all the dust um, that's obviously um, sitting around after a normal builder's job is done. So, this is actually um, a slightly different one. This was just a, like a thorough tenant's clean. Uh, so they clean inside all the kitchen units and the floors and everywhere else. Uh, but this one hasn't played particular care at all. Um, and so this needs to be dealt with. And um, Ernest is going to probably have to paint, he might be able to touch this, touch this in with paint, but he may have to paint the entire wall. 
and the cleaners are going to pay for it. Of course they are because it's their fault. So that's where we are at the moment. So Alice has been hard at work, just putting up a few uh, things that were here beforehand, just bits and bobs of artwork, uh, which we're just sort of hanging around. We've put that up. Um, sometimes it makes a place sell a little bit easier um, or rent a little bit easier in this particular case. Uh, there's a few things left to do in here, a few touch-ups of paint. Um, bathroom's looking a lot better um, now that it's actually got some light, so that's quite good. Um, but I think it does actually... It'll probably be, have to be replaced at some point. I mean, there are some parts of it which are really in good nick. Um, the actual suite itself is obviously very... It's functional, it does its job, but it's not something that I would necessarily... Um, want to keep myself, but this is how things are. Let's go and see what else is going on. Here is the lovely Ernest Hello. again. Hello everyone. <laughs> and now I need opinion. I need uh, opinion, okay. It's this, an opinion. This, this, is, this is the middle. And if we go to the middle, all three will clash. That means if we go with a two in here. Why can we not why can we not do three? Because um, we can, but they should go lower, I guess. Lower is fine. Uh, I'd rather have them. I'd rather look at the line. Yes, no no no, that's fine. I'd rather I'd rather have all three together. They don't have to be the, the right line up. Yeah. Fantastic. In that case, let me work on the middle one. Yeah. And after that we can. Okay. Yeah, I just want them all three of them together. Everything else in here is looking good. Kitchen's looking good. The thing about artwork is that you don't actually have to put artwork up um, all the time in every single property. Um, most people, most clients will do it themselves, they'll choose themselves. Um, art, as you know, is very personal, so um, this is a rental property and this artwork was already here. So I'm not really doing anything, um, putting up anything up, which is particularly my taste. Um, in fact, it's just very, it looks the normal stuff that you would get from Ikea. Um, it's just at this moment in time, because actually everything is very neutral in here, as befits a tenanted uh, property, it just na it adds a little bit of colour. Um, and in this particular case, red is the colour, which actually goes very well, uh, both with Egyptian cotton, which is what we have um, on the walls here, um, along with obviously this oatmeal um, roller blind that we have here. So um, all looking good so far. Works well with the red. Maybe next time though, um, I think what will probably happen is, is what I'm gonna tell the client, so the next time around, I think what we'll do is actually paint all of these wardrobes, uh, put some new handles on and really update it because the wood is itself, uh, the actual joinery itself is actually in good condition. So it's worth keeping, um, which is fine. So it just means that you can change these rather long handles um, that we have here. Again, this was all here previously. It's nothing that I've put in, um, but it could do with um, it could do with the paint, just updating. Um, that's all you need to do with on that, put some new handles on. And obviously the bathrooms, as you've seen, um, those will probably need to be changed the next time around, probably because they're really, really quite old. Um, they've, uh, they've just been used rather a lot and they've lasted well, um, but I think they'll need to be changed. But I'd say you've probably got another four or five years before you need to do that, which is good news for the client. Whilst this is happening here at the Regent's Park job, um, I've actually had a few emails um, come in, emails and texts come in from the Reading job. Uh, this is to do with the sideboard. If you remember the sideboard, I'll put that in the notes up the top here, um, has come in. So I haven't seen it as yet, obviously I know what it looks like, um, but I haven't actually seen it in situ. And I need to make sure that it's actually in the right place um, and looks good for the client. The client has her reservations um, at the moment, so she's pretty much saying, I think it's too large and I think it's squashing the curtains. Um, I'm not quite sure how she's placed it, so um, I need to see exactly what that is. Um, I'm slightly worried about leaving lots of gaps 
um, on either side of it. So almost, um, you've got to be very careful when you're actually placing furniture in a room. The reason being, if you have something too squished, then it, it will look uh, squashed. Um, but if you actually leave room and you sort of place it um, as if you were sort of setting up styling a home, um, then people in real life will end up putting stuff um, down the side of all the different bits of furniture um, and then it'll look messy and I know particularly what this client is like um, and she has got a lot of stuff and I think that she'll just end up putting stuff, stuffing stuff down the sides and that's not going to work for anybody. One thing to watch, when you've actually had some painting done but you haven't actually had any of the electrical work done then generally the uh, accepted practice is to actually take the sockets off the wall um, and this is all fine, so you would take those off, do the painting um, and then put the sockets back on. Uh, what you do have to watch though is actually that the sockets are actually fixed back on the wall. So if you see here, this here is wonky. So um, Ernest is going to tighten those back on um, so that everything is safe and secure. So here we are at the Primrose Hill job and today is just a quick look um, at the flooring in here and the floor space specifically. We have the new rug coming in, or rather I say it's the new, the new rug for here, it's actually the old rug from their old property. It's been cleaned and it's coming back in next week so I just want to make sure we have the correct floor space available for it. Um, it's going to be sitting down here um, in this space here. Um, so it's going to go quite well with the with the blue of the Togo chairs um, behind me. But it just means that this tote rug down here is going to have to go. I'm not quite sure where the client wants it. Um, it won't go into the kitchen, uh, but it may well go upstairs into one of the children's rooms. But um, just going to have a quick look, make sure that everything is going to fit where it needs to fit, um, and that we're ready for next week. Rug space um, is an interesting one to do because what do you actually do? if you don't have the room. Do you roll rugs up? I never like doing that. So realistically, if you cannot fit a rug in, then it's best not to use it. Um, and it's best to just put it out of the way um, and put it into storage or somewhere else and get yourself one that actually fits. This particular rug that we actually have coming back is from the rug store. It's called Poppy. I'll put a link up uh, for you. And it's by Suzanne Sharp. Um, we've had it for a long time. So it's seen better days. Um, it, comes actually quite well after you've cleaned it, but it does still have a few marks on it because it has a cream background and obviously it's got the, um, the actual red um, elements to it. And obviously, as you might've seen on previous projects, um, it does actually come with an underlay, um, but that um, can be stained because the red actually uh, feeds through into the underlay. When you're placing a rug, uh, the main thing to think about is, again, will it fit, but also what actually sits underneath it. Now, this is a particularly small space for the clients, but uh, the rug is actually fairly large, so it's really going to cover quite an expanse of this particular flooring here. Um, I think we're probably going to, it's going to actually fit all the way around. These Togo chairs um, are actually going to be sitting on it, um, and that's fine. I think it's a good idea to actually have um, uh, a rug space which actually covers the floor, especially if you've got young children. Um, so that if they do fall down, they're, they're actually falling onto a, a reasonably soft uh, surface. So the plan is to actually fit this around in this space. I think it will fit right up um, to the bottom of the joinery as this rug is just down here. Um, so if that's the way that that fits and if that can fit like that, that will be the ideal situation. Meanwhile, we should go and have a look and see uh, what Ernest is doing because he's doing the um, headboard for the lovely housekeeper. So let's just make sure that he's doing what he's doing. Up to the top here. Unfit. How's that doing? It's good. It's good. Uh, this one doesn't have a big bolt. What does that mean? You remember that big butterfly bolt? Yeah. It doesn't have it which roughly translates as someone hasn't kept the fittings and the screws for the bed. Um, so Ernest is just going to get a little bit creative um, in order to fit the new headboard on. And once that's done, it looks like this, nice and easy, nice and clean, good for the housekeeper, just a very plain, simple, upholstered 
uh, linen headboard in magenta. Great stuff. I just want to know if I'm ever romantic, and I'm not romantic at all. She is just. just I'm never romantic. That. She is very romantic and very beautiful. Quite enough of that. Right. I think we're sorted. It's snowing, Mum. It's not snowing. It is. You know it hardly snows anymore. Global warming or whatever that is. It's snowing. It's not snowing. Stop telling people it's snowing. Oh, the window is white. I never find my bag. This is the bane of my life. Right. Tape. Okay, so we're next stop is actually um, I'm going to grab some food because I haven't eaten yet, and then I'm going over to the Chelsea house. Uh, but that's not until this afternoon. Uh, but that's fine. It gives me a chance to get up, get up to scratch with some of my other work. Okay, chicken. I think we're all done for the minute. Um, I'll see you next week. From a distance, you can tell. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have a whole raft of stuff for you. I've got your invoices as well. Fantastic. So. Um, that was just a that too. No, it's great. This one's been me later. Yeah, it's fine. So we're all done at the Chelsea house. Um, that was all great. The Christmas tree is up, all looking good. Um, they're happy, they're warm. Everything is uh, sorted out. Um, I was in there with a the joiner, so we were actually putting on uh, the handles. I'll put a link up here so you can see what they look like. Um, and these handles are from Turnstile. The problem is the actual screws that they put behind them um, are too small. Um, they don't tell you what they're going to send with you, so you'll often have to buy these separately, which is a bit of an issue. Um, but it's quite a normal thing to do. All joiners uh, usually carry these along with them, uh, so that's what they've done. They've actually screwed on the new screws on the back of these particular um, handles, the knobs which go on there. So, all being well, the clients will be pleased when they see those when they get home tonight. The other thing that they were doing was the sensor for the lights. Now, the uh, lights are actually on a sensor which is actually in, with actually in the um, bit of wardrobe itself, so they're actually at the top. And as you open the doors, the lights are supposed to come on and stay on for a particular uh, time. Uh, you can sort of set this, but you do have to time it. It doesn't say 20 seconds, 30 seconds or whatever. Um, it just is it's almost like a nodule that you have to just um, adjust. So uh, I think these um, particular sensors are not as sensitive as they should be. So I'm going to put in a couple of new ones for them um, and adjust the sensor so that it lasts for 30 seconds. They'll open a wardrobe, the lights will stay on for 30 seconds whilst they peruse their clothing um, and that should give them ample time. Perfect. What's uh, really interesting is to see clients actually within a home and how they're using it. So you can see um, where bedside tables are, what's on them, what they're using, uh, what lights are on, um, how the bathrooms are being used, do they need more hooks, um, how is the tiling bearing up, um, do they have enough room on the recess within the shower? All those sorts of things um, just need looking at. Um, you can also see marks on walls. Um, you can see where they've been taking things up and down the stairs, uh, the pressure points, uh, where the carpet is being used, where it's not. All those types of things uh, you look at when you go back uh, to see a client, to see how they're using it. It's very much a user experience um, side of the work, which people don't really talk about. They just seem to think that you do design and then you leave them to it. And that's simply not the case. So it's one thing to note, um, you will be called back, you will notice what goes on in these properties when you've left them, um, because you will be going back, returning to the scene of the crime, as I call it. One of the other things I've done is actually pick up some sockets, which are uh, not needed. Uh, we were going to use them for this particular project, um, but they are now going back to the manufacturers, which is fine because uh, the client wants to swap a few other things um, around anyway, so it's almost going to be a bit of a like for like. It just means it makes it slightly easier um, on the finances if you can actually return some items um, and get a refund. Um, so that should be good. Um, and the client is pleased with that, so they don't have any excess items hanging around the house. And it means that the money has been well spent on exactly what they want it to be spent on. 
So that's it for today, and I'll see you on the next video. I got time, it's clear to see From up here, the world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful, you and me We meant to be Outdoors, forever free.